Thank you for listening. I am Mike Strauss, a.k.a. Strauss21. And I am the number one underground comic, Apollo Taj Mahal. If you like the interview, and we know you will, go ahead and give us a like and a follow on all the social media platforms, whether it is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all the same, guys. Did You See That Shit podcast. Yeah. You can also find us at didyouseethatshit.com. And did your... Google Play, iTunes, pretty much wherever you find your favorite podcast. By the way, if you enjoyed this interview, go listen to the full podcast and everything we just told you. Dot com. Right now, I want to introduce Julio Arce. He is a featherweight in the UFC. He has a record of 14 and 2. And, uh, well, he is in the UFC now. What's going on, brother? Not much, man. Just relaxing today. It's just a little crazy weather here in New York. You know, the snow's coming down hard, so just chilling. Yeah, how much snow have you guys gotten? Uh, well, at first this morning it wasn't that bad. It was like a little drizzle. So I went up the train in Jersey, and then on the drive back, you know, then it just started coming down hard. It started sticking. Not as bad yet, but it's starting to pile up. I think it's like almost like, you know, an inch, two inches of snow. Yeah, you know, snow is just one of those things where it's just a, it's a pain in the butt. You know, it's, it doesn't shut everything down, but it just makes things a little bit more difficult. Yeah, so, it sucks. Congratulations, man. I mean, the, the last time we spoke, it was before, right before the Dana White, the Tuesday Night Contender Series fight you had. How was that whole experience, man? The whole Contender experience, it, it was great. You know, what I loved about it is was, you know, I was with my camp the whole time. Um, of course, it was a short notice fight. They called me up. You know, it was an opportunity I just had to take because it would be what kind of cat- would catapult me into the UFC and you know, it was great. You know, I went out there. You know, did I uh, got to visit the Performance Institute? Then, um, then fight week. You know, came back, kept training. Then fight week, flew back out there, and then you know, just made result. You know, got to finish my opponent in the second round. And you know, even though I didn't get the call, they did just put put me on the on the map. So it was great. Yeah, it definitely put you on everybody's radar. If they, if people didn't know who you were already, they definitely did after the Contender Series fight. You know, it's funny, man, because I thought you fought very well. You won. I thought you fought good enough to earn a contract. But as you mentioned, it didn't work out that night for you. I talked to Shane Burgos right after that fight, and me and him both were very surprised that you didn't get the contract. Were you just as surprised as we were? At first, that was... I was very surprised because, you know, like, I got a finish. You know, it was over somebody that was, you know, he was also prospecting. He was very good, very well-known. But, you know, like, I got the job done. And, you know, I felt like I did it in great fashion. But uh, then afterwards, I was just like, you know what? He's like, maybe I'm meant, he's like, I'm going to get there a different road. You know, some people get in there, you know, instantly. You know, some people, they have to take a longer longer road to get there so i just kept my head up i'm like i'm just gonna go back to training stay ready for anything and then when i heard about uh you know that uh charles rosa got hurt and he had to pull out of his uh, fight in boston uh shane pretty much you know messaged me start going on twitter as well as my manager dave fish and they were just they were like yo you know take the chance this person hurt throw your name out there and you know go and go for it and what happened i ended up getting the call Wow, that's how that all came together. Very cool, man. I'm, I'm I'm very glad they gave you that shot at UFC 220. Let me ask you, man, because, you, you know, guys like you, you, you kind of mentioned it, guys like you, certain fighters for whatever reason, you are 14-2, and two, you've been through the trenches in the, in the MMA world, man. So, you know, the UFC doesn't have really anything new to offer you in terms of that. There's a lot of guys that come into the UFC that have three, four, five fights, You've been there and done that. So why do you think it took so long for the UFC to finally wake up and realize that Julio Arce is a legit featherweight? I, I, you know, I don't know. You know, like UFC, they, I'm guessing they see people maybe that are more exciting. They have exciting finishes. But then what happens, they go under the, the bright lights and they don't perform the way they should. And then it's like, you know, the, their, their fight career starts kind of going down. Um, you know, like, I don't know what they look for, but, like, in my own mind, I was like, 
looked just like my teammate uh, Jimmy Rivera. He had to take he had he had a long uh, long road before they called him up, and mm-hmm. now that they finally did, you know he's you know he's finding the top guys. He's aiming to be a champion. So the same thing, you know, I had to take my own road to get there, and I just had to trust the process, and eventually, you know, it came to me. Yeah, all you guys at Tiger Showman, man, it's fantastic to see that you guys are finally getting your due as a gym and as well, you know, all your individual careers are starting to really blossom now, too. So that's very cool to see. Uh, I know that you are active in social media. Where can everybody follow you at? Um, Everyone can follow me at uh, JulioArce89 on Instagram and then JRCTSMMA on Twitter. And, yeah, just keep following my journey, you know, like I'm... Just looking to just be a great martial artist and just make it to the top, fight the best, you know, fight the best of the best. I definitely think uh, you are one of the best, man. Is there any chance that we might get you at bantamweight ever again? You know what? Like right now, it's you know, like I, I've been keeping my weight low, just staying ready, just in case of anything, I'm staying in shape. But you know, I, I kind of moved up for for you know, to have better weight for a reason. It was. I was fighting at bantamweight, you know, my last couple of fights, you know, the last two losses that I had was, you know, against Brian Kelleher. And it was at that point that, you know, my body was starting to get to that point where the weight cut was doing me more harm than good. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm like, I don't, I don't want to worry about it. Uh, the, the fight shouldn't be with me and the scale. It should be, you know, with me and that other person and me training my skills to make myself better. It shouldn't be like, oh man, I got to be this weight by so on, you know. Um, I gotta lose this amount. It's like I don't, I don't want to have to deal with that. And now, literally, for my last fight in Boston, I weight was fine. It wasn't an issue at all. I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just excited about the whole moment. And then that's it. You know, like weight cuts not an issue for me. Yeah, I definitely think uh, featherweight is a good place for you, man. And you're right. You shouldn't. The the fight should not be between you and the scale. It should be between you and your opponent. And uh, w- when it is that, you are very effective, sir. You're one of the best. And I'm glad. I'm glad to see that uh, you, you're finally in the big show. And I can't wait for big things for you this year, man. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? The floor is yours. Yeah, you know, look, I just I just thank every 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 single person that supported me through my journey. You know, my family, my girlfriend, my teammates, uh, you know, my my coaches, all my mentors, uh, you know, Tiger Showmans, all my students in, in Bayside Tiger Showmans and the whole Tiger Showmans organization. Like, everybody, you know, it's just, it was just behind me 100% from the moment I started. It's just it's been amazing. So it's been, it's been quite a journey. And now, you know, like, we, we start this new chapter and let's just look to get to the top. That's it. Well, I want to thank you for your time, Julio. I can't wait to see what the uh, the UFC has planned for you, man. Uh, let me know uh, when uh, there's a fight in the works, and we'll get you back on, brother. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to look. I'm I'm looking to try and get on that Utica card, the Utica card, New York card with uh with my teammate Jimmy Rivera because he's fighting. You know, he's the main event. Mm-hmm. So that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, that'd be a great. Uh, that's shaping up to be a very good card, man. Yeah, so I can't wait for that. Well, thank you for your time, man. Take it easy. Yeah. Thank you for, ta- for having me. <laughs>